Today we'll be looking at building a peaceful home, part three. Building a peaceful home, part three. Your home will enjoy peace. To build means to construct, raise, erect, or develop. I repeat, to build means to construct, to raise, erect, or develop. Peaceful entails calmness, free from crisis, violence, worries, or annoyance. While a home primarily refers to a place where one lives, especially as a member of a family or household. A home is not a building or a structure, but an environment where your love dwells. Not every house is a home, but most homes are definitely located in houses. Beautiful structures don't make a good homes. It is good homes that add value to the structures. A home is an environment or place where you love spending time in and feel comfortable and relaxed in. It's a place where you feel safe and have a deep sense of belonging. Many have fine houses, but don't have fine homes. A home is the abiding place of the affections, where love is found. A home is where not just your heart is, but the house of those you love and trust. The first people God gave a home was Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden. Building a peaceful home, therefore, means raising or developing an environment free from crisis or worries where members of the family or others can receive sincere affection, which is love, feel safe and comfortable. From today, that shall be your own portion. So a Christian home actually is designed to be an extension of heaven on earth. Have you ever tried to go back home and you don't feel like going home? It means you have a house, you don't have a home. You want to go back, even after service now, you don't feel like going back. What you have is not a home. What you have is what? A house. A home is where you want to go and your heart is at peace. A home is a place where love is found. A house is a place where you find bricks and mortars. And a home is where the character and the destiny of any individual begins and takes proper shape. The home is your number one church. The home is your number one school. The building is also as good as its foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Psalm 11 verse 3. So the foundation of the building called peaceful home is wisdom. Is what? The foundation of a peaceful home is what? Wisdom. Wisdom is the master key to all the treasures of life. I'm going to show you something that will baffle you. Many of you know this scripture, but look at it carefully. Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 28, and we read together responsibly. All of us will read. Therefore, I will read 24, you read 25. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them is likened unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You read verse 25. Take note, the rain came. Is that true? And everyone. That yet the sins of man and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man 
We build a house upon the sun. Now look at verse 27. You saw that the same thing in 25 is related to itself. Want to go? One did not fall, one fell. But the same thing happened to the two. Through? So, what happened to the other one happened to that one. So, what made you to divorce? Somebody else overcame it. What made you to shout? Somebody else kept quiet. What made you to fight? Somebody else did not fight. The same challenge that made you to say, I'm packing out. Somebody else was able to pack in. The missing key is wisdom. Every crisis in the home is wisdom crisis. It's not this satanic invasion. So I hear. It's more of wisdom deficiency. By wisdom, you can handle any kind of challenge in your home by wisdom. Say, Lord, I need wisdom. Say it one more time. The wisdom of God offers you the way of escape from marital and family crisis. You need wisdom to enjoy peace in your family. And a peaceful home does not fall from the sky. It takes deliberate and committed effort to build it. So I hear. I hear a testimony. A husband and wife, young husband and wife, wedded in this church. All of a sudden, two of them said they're not going to get married. Every pastor tried, so they called my attention and said, we have tried, we can't, please step in. I called them from where they were. I said, come down, stay in the guest house, give them tips. The man looked at the wife. He said, sir, except you want me to die, then allow me to condone this marriage. I talked from now to tomorrow. He said, sir, if you want me to die, condone this marriage. The man said, if you want to kill me, allow me to stay with this man. Anyhow, I talk, no way. So I got tired. I said, well, at this point, you're free. The one day the man sat in front here and I was teaching unconscious. After hearing the message, he said, he now understood that what he's trying to do shows he has no conscience. But conscience will make you know when you're wrong. It is the police of the heart. He said, no, when I thought on godliness and conscience, he said, no, 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 no. This, my heart can't be this hard and tough. I've missed it. And I was not thinking anything. I saw, I just went after service as I was trying to go. I saw somebody bent face like this. And he was standing and the woman bent her face. I said, who is this woman who is standing by, sitting by my door refused to raise her face? When I was done, they refused to make sure that everybody was finished. Then he came to me and said, Papa, I want to see you. From that time, everybody was there. She did not raise her face. So I said, who is this person? Who you will stay here for all these minutes? If you and I said, I saw his wife. He said, Papa, no preaching. We have reconciled. <laughs> I smiled. I said, so all this. Then he began to share his testimony. You know the reason? He now had wisdom to know how to handle his family. When I said, he said, sir, <laughs> hey, see my wife? The whole of my family loves her now. I love her too. We are the best of friends. Why? There are things they did not know, they know now. So it was not that the challenges were not there, but they lacked wisdom to handle them then. Now they have the wisdom. So the thing making you to think that your own family is the worst is lack of wisdom. Every house rains. There is no house where rain does not fall. It depends on the kind of umbrella you use. You are not the first to go through challenges. If you're packing up because the man talks too much, you better find out some male who will drink and drink and say, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be looking at some wise elements for building a peaceful home. Some what? Elements for building a peaceful home. My hope is built on nothing else. 
Some wise wisdom elements. I got you. Some wisdom what? Wise elements for building a peaceful home. Ooh, my, my, my. <laughs> These elements must be in place. Number one element is the word of God. Number one element is what? The word of God. God began with the word. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So your family must begin with the word. That's the foundation. Your home. And Jesus is the word. Peace only comes through Jesus. So peace can only come through the word. Any other means there will be no peace. Any man's principle will work. <laughs> Listen, when it comes to peace in the home, no human principle can work except the word of God. Marriage is not the product of traditional belief. Marriage is not the product of any custom. Marriage is a direct product from God. It's the only one that has the formula to give peace. It was instituted by God. There's no day any system can tell you how to marry. That's why anyhow worldly people are listen. Have you gone to any court and they try to make peace? They divorce you. <laughs> Have you gone before any judge? And they say, no, no divorce. Have you seen one before? They tell you, now this case is closed. Divorce approved. The only place and the only ground where he has such testimonies is with the word. Because the owner who is dead is who? God. Nobody goes to court and they tell you, the judge will tell you, now as a judge, no divorce. Two of you settle. They will, tell you, they will just tell you, separate amicably. What is peaceful in separation? There is no peace in separation. So the only place is the word. Do what the word says if you desire peace in your home. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Don't argue it. Don't debate it. Don't analyze it. Do it. John 2 5. Whatever the word of God tells you, do it. And peace is an offspring of wisdom. So anything God's word says, do it. You will enjoy peace. I see peace come to you. Don't argue it. Don't rationalize it. Don't try to use your human sense. Just do it. So I hear. Mm. Because God's original design is peace. And it's his desire for every home to have what? Peace. In John 14 to the 7. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Jesus speaking. Knowing Jesus the world brings peace. And from the way peace enter every home. You can't ignore the place of the world and expect peace in your family. No. If you push the world aside, there will never be peace. Is that clear, sir? You want peace? This is the foundation. What is the foundation? The world. If this foundation is destroyed, what shall the righteous do? I don't believe in the word. I don't believe in peace. Go for what? The word. Number two. Second element for building a peaceful home, go for knowledge. Go for what? Go for knowledge. Many 
don't know where they are even going to. Why, what is, okay, if I ask you, why do you want to marry? Do you know many people don't know why? Yeah, but say, I want to marry because you know, all my mates are married. Is that the reason you want to marry? You will divorce. That all your mates are married, that's why you want to marry. I can tell you, you will not enjoy marriage. So I'm saying, I want to marry because, you know, I'm tired. I can't be alone. I have to service myself. Is that the reason? <laughs> if that is the reason you want to marry, you'll be tired. You'll be what? Why do you want to get into marriage? You must have knowledge. Why do you want to read engineering? I don't want to read because I want to be an engineer. You'll be a user's engineer. You should know the purpose of anything you want to do. Why do you want to marry? And why are you in marriage? Say so here. You must have knowledge. You must have what? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Most I will stop there. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. Because they have rejected knowledge. I've rejected. So God forbid. Many don't like knowledge. Even when they say, this is what God says. They say, Pastor. Try right here. I knew before I got married how marriage should be. Many homes are in disarray because the couples and family members lack adequate knowledge concerning family harmony. Stop working by assumptions. Stop working by what? Assumption can be very devastating. Have what? Knowledge. Have what? Have knowledge. Have what? If you don't have knowledge, your mother can confuse you. Your own mother. Because she will tell you what she knows. Not of the world. She say, no, our time. Where did you read that in our time? You know, our time, if a man has to come, the woman has to stand by the door. Where is it written in the Bible? And make sure when you want to cook food, cook oh, don't give him plenty meat, give him two. Where did you see the Bible? I know people till today, full fledged tongue speaking people, when there are scarces, the first place they go to is their village to consult people to settle the matter. If Vilebo said to you, you have a problem. But by then, the kind of those are walking sticks with demons standing here. <laughs> I've not seen any marriage villagers step into that peace came. They will scatter. Because they are not even happy that you are going to church in the first place. You now call them to come and say to them, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the chief will come with that is demonic, demonic. He said, now, um, in our place, you, kneel down, one goat. You kneel down, one foul. You have already bowed down to the devil. You have started with the devil. So the devil has no peace in him. Is there any peace in the devil? Oh, so I don't know where you came from, but the part where my place came from, they will bring dry gin. And I said, the demons that are good, take right hand. I wonder which demon is good. <laughs> the demon, I don't know if you know that kind of thing. You, they would pour dry gin. They say, all the demons that are good, enter the house. And the demons that are bad, take left hand. Now, which demon is good? Dread gene, hot gene. They will not take the hot gene. Oh, look, oh, make libation. Leave libation, libation. The demons, they are very good. Come and eat. They will pour the gene from outside to the house. Then they will use left hand. All the demons are bad. Take left hand. They want to set to Corello. Ah, the demons now sit down in front and say, now we are here to set And do you know Christians go to such people for settlement? Because they lack Go for knowledge. Go for what? You can't assume knowledge. If you don't know it, you don't know it. You don't know it? You don't know it. I have never made an attempt to beat my wife. Not that I'll be tempted. There's no temptation that will make me bitter. Ask me why. Knowledge. Ask me why. Knowledge. I can never lift my hand on her. It's not a prayer point. Knowledge. Can I beat myself? Can you see a man moving on the road, doing like this? Won't you stay clear? I said, this man must be crazy. True? True? Because he must have a psychiatric problem to be hitting himself. When a man leaves his hand against his wife, he's beating himself. By knowledge. Two of you are one flesh. And no man can beat himself. 
So beating your wife is beating yourself. You have a psychiatric problem. It doesn't need prayer. It does by knowledge. By what? When a woman was like points her finger on a man, I will deal with you. She's talking to herself. So a woman who has not laid, we know that pointing finger at the man, she's pointing at herself by knowledge. By what? Knowledge. Any problem two of you have, you sort it out. You don't carry your problem outside. By knowledge. By you are stupid. You are telling yourself you are equally stupid. By what? But the, it is not a, it's not a gift of knowledge. Oh. It is acquired knowledge. You have to acquire it. You have to read. You have to practice. Whatever he t- it is not how many years you have been married. Oh. I've seen 70. My father and my mother quality did right. So it's not how old you are. It is the knowledge you have. Who well, have been married for 40 years has nothing. I've seen 50 years old married people who quarrel. So it's not the years, it's knowledge first. What? There's no experience in marriage. You know it, you know it, you don't know it, you don't know it. I've seen old people who quarrel. Very old. They say, I'm not enduring people because of the children I have. Even for the children, I would have left this marriage since. So you don't have knowledge. Children shouldn't be the reason why you should stay in marriage. Now, right. all you quarrel and people may hear me. You are not a mother because your wife must give you a boy. Are you quoting my hearing what I'm saying? You are married because you love the woman. Do you know there are many born again Christians who if the wife does not have a male child, the woman will be under pressure. And is the woman who gives children? She's not the giver of children. True. So why do you want to kill her because she has female? He said children are blessing from the is it her fault? No. But the fault is your own. But do you know there are men who put their wives on that born again tongue speaking men? Say, so my wife has four kids. So when it comes to France, you say, why? Four kids. Are the quitting men hearing me? Nda. Owe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have knowledge, you know children are the heritage. Whether male or female, they are blessing from God. Calm down, my friend. Even on the altar, you see some men come back and say, my wife just gave birth to a boy. Shout hallelujah! You, forget that they, you don't hear them say, my wife gave birth to a girl. I mean, you see testimonies very soon. Just if you want in the church, they, they say, she just gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. You see the excitement in the man. As when it comes to the girl, they say, she just gave birth to a baby girl. He has no knowledge of the word of God. In Liberia, what men are in Nigeria is what women are in Liberia. The access of the father is inherited by the woman. So in Liberia, women are more important. Some presidents of nations are not women. So women are also important. Please don't allow yourself. People don't know Bible. They just do traditional things. Go and settle with the word of God. You must know this book, otherwise, crisis can't stop. Crisis what? If you don't know this Bible, crisis can't stop. And they can't know it for you. Because if they buy bed for you, will they sleep on your behalf? If they buy drug for you, will they drink it for you? All right. How many will acquire knowledge? In this modern time, go and buy books. Go and buy what? Books. And read them. Before you even marry, read them. Don't say when I marry. Read them before you marry. Because challenges will come. The challenges will, they will come. in laws will come. Everyone will come. But because you have the word. I'll tell you a life story. When my mother was alive, she came one day and said, Papa, come. So I now sat her, come and said, Mama, draw the line. This line, no go cross. My wife did not even know. I said, this line, no go cross her. I am the one who is married to my wife. You are not the one who married her. If there's any problem, tell me. But you don't go to talk to my wife. Never you, never you talk to my wife. Anything you don't like, tell me. I tell her. It's not our wife. It's my wife. <laughs> Aquia, no, you know, she's not our, there's no our marriage. 
He said, a man shall marry. We didn't say, a man shall marry our wife. All those are traditional nonsense. How can your family members come to talk to your wife? No. They should talk to you, then you pass the message to your wife. But we don't read Bible. He said, what address your wife? And you carry your wife for to sit down. For your... <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. The same way too, your sisters will be telling you about your husband. Do you know that sister? Look, the worst family is to ever have sisters who are not married and they are all big. I have not seen any family whose sisters are not married and big that don't scatter their brother's wife. They will say, we'll go pack out, we'll go pack out. You know why? They are not married. So to pack out woman is not a deal. We'll go to pack out, we're going to pack out. They are not married. So to pack somebody out is nothing to them. If they are married, they say, my, my brother, calm down, calm down, calm down. Because they, too, they have their problems in their families. But said any family you have grown up women who are not married, Akatakas. They say, that's my brother's wife. We'll go pack out, we'll go pack out, we'll go pack out. Because they are not married. They don't know what it takes to marry. If you are tough, you to go to yourself for your husband's house now. But when you know Bible, you say, hey, hey, hey. What is it? Tell me, I'll talk to my wife. People should read Bible. Read this Bible. Books are everywhere on marriage. You know, read. Number three. Are you? <laughs> I'm not happy. Acquire what? Acquire knowledge. There's no shortcut to the only shortcut is that you must read the Bible. Number three. I mean, I'm getting blessed here. Young man that wants to marry, acquire what? Knowledge. Even you, young man, before you go into the marriage, acquire knowledge. I said something. Before you say, yes, I do, know why you do. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said some very touching things. I said, a woman must not marry a man who cannot lead and take responsibility. A woman must not marry a man who is stingy. Because if he's stingy in courtship, he'll be stingy in marriage. A woman must not marry a man she does not love. And the very dangerous thing will be shocked. No man should marry a woman who loves money. Ask me why. She will destroy you. Any woman that lost money can do anything to you. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. When a woman loves money, it's a sign she's a dangerous woman. So when you say a woman loves money, don't marry her. What's making you to laugh? <laughs> Glory to Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you people laughing, huh? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Listen, 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 listen. For young people, for young what? Before you go into marriage, are you hearing what I'm saying? A man who does not respect your opinion will be a bully. If he's, he don't have anything to say, no, it's a sign that that man will never take your opinion. You are not a dummy. So when you talk, you should be able to take your opinion. There are some signs before... There are things you should know before you enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are danger signs. You know when there's red light, if you move, traffic police will hold you. So when you see those signs, say, hey, 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 hey. Because anyone that lost money will put you under pressure. There's no amount of money you give to her that will be enough. She will put you under pressure. For young people, listen. Oh. So before you say, I do, don't look at fine legs. She can have a fine leg and not have a fine heart. Go, 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 Anybody who cannot go to a church with you, you say, let's go to a church, he or she is complaining, just know he will make you backslide. You say, let's go for fellowship, you say, let's go to cinema. I didn't say, can't go to cinema, don't misquote me. 
But the time you want to want to say, well, that's fellowship time. It's not telling you. She's telling you, let's go to cinema. You you backslide, or you, he or she will make you. Every time you say church, that's the time you say we want to watch film. You you don't take three months after marriage, you go to hell. And then what I'm saying, so if you don't avoid these things, you'll be living in hell while in the marriage. The worst place to ever be is to have a wrong marriage. It is hell on earth. And if you have the right marriage, it is heaven on earth. So now that you are privileged to hear these things, to open your eyes to step in makes you a big fool. And can I say this? Man is too complex. Many people don't show their true nature until they step in. So how do you know? Many people pretend when they want something. When they step in, they bring their nature out. The easiest way to know is to put them under test and pressure. Because under pressure, every nature of a person comes out. That way, you just say, okay, this is the true nature of this person. Somebody who lost money, don't give the person, the person will react. You have the money, but don't give it. The person will react. You just say, this one. That's what. <laughs> I didn't say she should be stingy, but put the person under pressure. Well, if you have ear, you hear young people, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't marry who you don't love. You know why? If you don't love the person, you'll be tired after a while. When the person is moving in front, you'll be moving at the back. <laughs> you say, very good. I saw your husband and wife at the airport. I just told myself, this fool, there's no chemistry. The girl left the man. The man told me it was like this. She was even ashamed of the man. I'm sure the man has money. So it was money she married, not man. Don't marry because of money. Marry because you love the person. If you marry because of money, you'll be misbehaving in the man's house. Anybody you cannot be proud of, don't marry. Male and female. You can't show people this is my wife. You can't show people this is my husband. Don't marry. Already signed that shown that you are not proud of the marriage. Find somebody you love. Love, oh, love, oh. <laughs> Holy love. <laughs> no go for holy love. Oh. <laughs> holy love. Oh, love. Oh, love. Wait a song. Love. Oh, love. Oh, love. Oh, holy love. Oh. Please don't go for holy love. Oh. Accept responsibility. Accept what? Accept. Have a good understanding of your responsibility in the home. Husband's responsibility. I'll tell you, wife's responsibility, children's what? Responsibility. Responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. I should take it? Let me take only the men. The man's responsibility, hey, the man's responsibility, husband's responsibilities. Love your wife and children despite their weaknesses. Love your wife and children despite their what? No one has attained perfection. We are still working towards perfection. Colossians 3.19 Colossians 3.19 the Bible said, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. He said, love them. Jesus did not wait us to be perfect before he loved us. So why we are yet what? Romans 5 verse 8, Christ died for us. Make yourself approachable by your wife and children. Love is not a feeling. It is a choice. I, I don't feel like loving this woman. No, you don't have to feel like. You have to love. Hello. In fact, love is loving the unlovable. You understand love when you love the unlovable. <laughs> Your wife does not have to be good before you love her. Love her because God's word says so. Are you getting it clear? Are you hearing what I'm saying? First Corinthians chapter 13, you will give you summary of love. It's a love endures with patience. Love is kind. 
So when you love, that is verse 4. When you love, the amplified version. When you love, you be patient. You be what? You be patient with the person. You be kind to the person. You, in the midst of the thing, you see be kind. When you love somebody, do you know you be patient? Hmm? Look, if anybody does not have patience, love is not there. Love will make you to be patient. You'll be kind. In the midst of the person's mistake, you'll still be kind. So I hear. Mm. It's a choice. Is it what? It's a choice. So I've made my choice. The man must make sure he takes care of his family, providing food, clothes, shelter, school fees. He is the home jiry, while God is the Jehovah jiry. That does not mean the woman cannot support. He must be a working man. Must be a what? Any man who wants peace in his family should not be idle. If you allow your wife to feed you, you have become a senior cone. Every man must walk. Every man must what? Every man must walk. If your wife gives you food without walking. You know, men greet like this. Women do like this. True? It's not so. Men do like this. Women do like this. So if the man is not walking, when the wife gives you food, what should he do? After eating our food, he says, Cecilia. <laughs> he has become the woman. Men walk. Men what? Walk. Every man must what? All these boys, Jingolo boys, walk. <laughs> no woman can feed you. Food won't pass your throat. Walk. Woman feed you. You are, you are happy to be eating woman money. And some of you want to marry. You want to get married. She's a banker. You'll be a senior house boy. Walk. Every man, do something. Rise to your feet. Lift your right hand and say, all this I've heard. I still going to put it to practice. Go ahead and pray for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name. You take one prayer point. It said, Dead has been swallowed up what? In victory. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54. And Psalm 102, verse 20, to lose those appointed to death. Use the name and the blood of Jesus to cast out the spirit of death and infirmity ravaging any home connected to salvation ministries. In one minute, go ahead in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of death. Cast you out of salvation ministries in the name of Jesus. Ow! Dead will cast you out. Ow. Cast you out. In Jesus' mighty name. Second prayer, I will pray that God will give every home to enjoy long, useful work, life, sound health in the body and mind and flourish in all that concerns us. Will long life, will I what? i show you my salvation. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Look at the prayer point here. God, cause everyone connected to your message to enjoy sound health and body, mind, flourish and all that consigns us from this moment. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Now the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Go in peace. Enjoy peace in your home. All crisis comes to an end. Wisdom to put what you have had to practice in this hour. It is well with you. It is well with your family. Amen. It is well with your business. Amen. It is well with your career. Amen. It is well with your body. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Strange doors are open for young people to get married. Amen. Be blessed in your academics. Amen. Be blessed in everywhere. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Be blessed with the fruit of the womb. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. In Jesus name. You are God's most prized possession. 
your worth to him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the